Well, this morning, uh, the scripture lesson and uh, the sermon, we're going to be talking how it is that Jesus sends us out. Uh, sometimes in the church we use words like evangelism or mission, and we are sent out into the world, into the community, to tell the good news of others and invite others to know Christ's love for them as well. Now, we're it doesn't always fit into our more subtle, uh, uh, shall we say, conservativeness, uh, as far as that goes. When we think of missions and evangelism, when we think of going out two by two, more often, we're thinking about the Mormons who come on door to door, or uh, also the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses who go out door by door. And they'll knock on the door and they'll share the watchtower track with you or other, other sorts of items to tell you their version of what the good news is. Well, there's a, there was a couple missionaries who showed up at this one woman's door. And uh, she saw them, you know, through the drapes in the window, saw them come up, and they rang the doorbell, and she goes out to them, and in no uncertain terms tells them that she is not going to listen to a word that they say, and she's not going to accept any ideas that she has. And then she went to slam the door in their face. And as she took a hold of the door and lively threw that door shut on them, trying to make a point, I guess, the door almost magically sprang back open. And she thought, well, that can't be. So she grabs the door a second time. And she pulls it back, and with all her strength, she slams that door shut. And again, boom, almost like from heaven, the door is open to those missions. And she's ready to do it a third time just to make her point, be sure she can do this. And the missionary whispers to her, Madam, you should move your cat. <laughs> For about six months or so, they have spent all of their time there. 
And last week we heard Jesus send them into Samaria, across the Jordan, and then from there they'll be headed to Jerusalem. And so now he sends not only the 12, but he sends out the 70, 72 by twos out into the villages, into the communities for which he will be going as he goes to uh, Jerusalem. So apostles they are. Uh, they are ones whom Jesus has sent. He's given them a mission, and he's given them a message. Well, sent. Uh, they're commissioned. You know that uh, at the end of Matthew's Gospel, you have the Great Commission. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all that he commanded. And Jesus gives us a promise that he'll be with us always in that. They are sent out. But there's a caveat to that as he says it to them. I'm sending you out. Go, he says. And he says, but you are going out as lambs amongst the wolves. In other words, you aren't always going to be received very well. We have news story after news story uh, about how it is that the Christian message is not always received well. In other countries and other places, in fact, it's received and the reaction is violent towards those who share that message. Also, Jesus is a good shepherd for us. He sends us lambs out amongst the wolves, but guess what? He's the one that sends us. For that purpose then, Jesus doesn't send us without anything. Although he instructs us not to take a purse or a coat or the other things with us, but simply to trust that God will provide in all of these things. When you go into a house, trust and eat with them and be with them, they'll provide for you. And this then is the work amongst us of the Holy Spirit. So we're not necessarily responsible for absolutely everything in this message, in this uh, being mission of being sent out. That indeed, Jesus is at work in and amongst us, that the Holy Spirit is at work in and amongst us. And our part in that is to do what he has asked us to do, and that is to go out. Well, not only is an apostle sent, but an apostle has a mission. And for, for them, it's very simple. When you go into a house, you're to announce peace to this household. Um, the word is shalom. And shalom means peace that God gives, not our own calmness or um, our own feeling of lack of stress or anxiousness, but rather it is a peace that comes from God as we trust God to take care of all things in our lives. Shalom to this house, then they would say, for which if it's received, the person will say shalom back to you. And they will know that this house, then, is one that God is at work in and then you can stay there peace, and then whether you have that, and then it's returned to you. And the second thing they're given in their mission is to heal the sick. Now, we often think of physical ailments, you know, when we think of healing the sick, of course, but I don't want to add to that that we have healing within forgiveness, healing within love, healing within relationships that takes place. And so that's a much broader subject that maybe we give it attention. Be an apostle, be one who is sent out then, we also have a message. And the message is to announce and proclaim the good news. We call that the gospel. The good news that God's love for us in Jesus Christ has come, that Jesus' death on the cross, his resurrection then, brings us this new life. We are then in Christ. In the words then of the gospel reading, it is that the kingdom of God has come near you. That is, that Jesus is coming near you. So they go into these houses and they say, guess what? God is peace, God's kingdom is now coming. Jesus is the bringer of that kingdom. And you will see that come now amongst us. Jesus has come and is with us and is with the disciples as they go out with the message. So you have that they are sent, you have that they have a mission, and then they have a message. And guess what, folks? So do we. The same thing. Sent people. See at the very beginning there where it says the harvest is plentiful. He says, pray for the workers. Pray that the workers will come and help with the harvest. That peace then will be in these households. That healing will take place, not only physical, but also spiritual and relational. And that Jesus is the coming of the kingdom in and amongst us. And the reason why all this happens. You and I. 
We are sent people, but we are to go. Martin Luther, the founder of the Lutheran Church, said this, the idea that service to God takes place only in the church and by words done therein. The whole world would abound with service to the Lord, not only in churches, but in homes, and kitchens, and workshops, and fields. Wherever we go, more importantly, not outside of the stores, to tell the community about the good news of Jesus. If you go to our website, you're going to see this little uh, yellow Volkswagen or car. I don't know if it's a Volkswagen. But the words, peace is worth the drive, is kind of a tag phrase with that. And with that, as we looked at our membership and we drew a great big circle around Peace Lutheran Church, it's not only Watertown and Mayor, but it extends out. We have members from all of these places that are a part of our community. So it's not just here at Peace, but it's literally all the way around us and more. When you start to hear about some of the missions that we are involved with, you will hear about places in India and elsewhere where we are involved in partnerships and ministry all around the world. Well, I want to tell you this morning this one important thing. You are outstanding in your field. <laughs> I know our corn isn't quite in this group right now, but it will be sometime along here. But you're outstanding in the mission field, if you will. And that's where you live and where you do all of the things that you do in your life. You are outstanding in that field, and you are to do what Jesus is saying you to do as well. I want to give you a huge opportunity to do this in the next uh, month or so. It's called the Welcome Neighbor Corn Feed. For the last two years, we've had our own Peace Lutheran Corn Feed. Uh, we've had uh, the worship band outside when the weather was permitting, and, and we roasted corn and had hot dogs and watermelon, and I think we're the only Lutheran church in town that's had a keg outside with root beer. <laughs> Wait, I was supposed to pause. We're the only Luther Church in town that has had a kegger <laughs> with root beer. <laughs> and with that, um, we've kind of prepared ourselves and, and practiced a little bit on how to do that, how to reach out with an invitation to others. And so on August 17th, on Saturday, from 4 to 6, we're going to have our Welcome Neighbor Corn Feed. It's a community <laughs> invite. So it's less for us and more for all of those that God might bring to be here, you see. And with that, there's a map of Watertown, if you can see that. We're going to be sending out some special invitations. And we're going to start small. We have a number of uh, uh, about 2,000 community mailings that will be sent out. Uh, with that, too, we're having yard signs and uh, posters and more importantly, your personal invitation. Remember in the scripture reading when it said that the Lord had appointed these 72 to send them out. And he said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask what the Lord of the harvest therefore to send out workers into the harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. So there we are, headed out to tell others and invite them to this event at East Luther. Corn feed. Number one thing i got to ask you, and this is, I speak from my heart on this, is that we need your prayer. I don't care if you don't do anything else in regards to this, but that you offer this in prayer to God. That somehow, through every means that we have available to us, the invitation will be made, and that the people who God is already touching with the Holy Spirit, they will, they will hear that, and they'll begin to be moved to come and experience what God is doing here at our church. Put a yard sign up in your yard. People are going to drive by and they're going, geez, yeah, what? Free corn? What? And they'll ask you about it. Maybe. We're going to walk door to door and we're going to hang door hangers on. And we're going to tell people about it that way. The community mailing and then ways to volunteer. And again, pray. Pray. Sometimes we say pray and we just say, well, it's routine. It's the thing we do. And not at all. This will be only successful if we offer our hearts in prayer. Well, at my old church in Roseville, we had a corn feed, and we did all those things, and it was kind of weird, because people actually came. <laughs> we thought maybe 300 hot dogs would be enough, and they kept coming. Stephanie, how many times did you drive to the grocery store to buy more hot dogs? And so, it'll happen here, too, God willing, and with 
your effort to reach out. I invite you maybe to be on a serving team. Uh, we're, uh, we have a number of people who did this here with uh, our own corn community. We serve sweet corn, hot dogs, chips. Um, we have a piece of watermelon to go with that. Beautiful summer celebration of food. Up in the picture there, there's a picture of Linda and Sue and others. And they started out and they, they said, what do you want me to do again, Pastor? I don't, I don't think I like butter that much. And of course, you know me. Well, Linda, <coughs> butter will be good for your skin. Keep it moist. And after working and doing it and serving people and people saying thank you, and why does your church do this? All of that, they came to understand that God was doing something to reach out as well. And then I got to tell you something about the smoking hot grill team. Uh, I tell you, these guys and gals were something because they were underneath a tent with about five of those uh, pork roasters going with uh, bar you know, croquettes and, and corn and smoke. And uh, there's a few of the crew there, Gary. I got Gary and Jeff and Ian and Karen here today, uh, and go oh, well, stand up, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they're wearing the real team official shirt as well, um, but they survived, <laughs> and um, they did lots and lots of years of corn for which people ate with great joy and celebrated what God was doing. You can be a part of that as well, and um, just double checking. If you were here in public, and I can kind of hold it to this, but you two said you do the grill team. Right? Okay. Okay. I got two more ready. So. <laughs> and then lastly, there's going to be all kinds of things. We got the Delano Community Band that's going to be here. We got some other music that's lining up. We got the fire department from Watertown's coming up with their fire truck and show the kids uh, put the hats on and rip the siren, etc. Clowns and all kinds of activities. And so it'll be quite a day. All of which your part is to pray. And that's that's all we're asking right now is to pray. And then if you'll join us in any of the other things, that's just wonderful from that point on. But pray and then extend that invitation. August 17th. Now the sound kind of it was. God bless you. Amen. Let's stand and sing. My life is.